I'd like to talk about what happened to me 11 years ago, in fact, 2009, because that story might, in fact, help some of you out today. And I'm thinking specifically of those of you who perhaps are furloughed right now, uh, looking at losing your job, have lost your job, and perhaps feeling like you're staring into the abyss. What are you going to do? Back in February, March 2009, I lost my job through redundancy. It's completely fair, good friends with the people in the organisation still. Uh, the right thing to do, but I was out. And uh, one time before, in fact, I'd also lost my job and I'd gone through a whole process of applying for jobs um, and it was hard work, really hard work. And at the time, I didn't want to do that again. So I thought, can I do something totally different? What do I love with a passion? And what I really thought I knew about and loved was working with Salesforce CRM. So back in March 2009, by then, company I worked for, I'd already deployed as part of a team, but I'd led the deployment of Salesforce. Um, nothing wrong with using systems integrators, but I chose to do it all myself. I read every night, I played, I downloaded packages, set up my own development orgs and just got into it and I built the whole solution that we used. Um, I took it on quite a lot, I loved it. I ended up speaking for Salesforce at events and hold the thought, but I was a good customer. Um, I didn't do that because I had the benefit of foresight, it's now hindsight, that I had though been a good customer. Um, I loved the solution, I really liked the people I worked with too from Salesforce, so I was speaking at events at the London Institute of Directors a few times for Salesforce. So I lost my job. And Salesforce, the people that I was working with um, in the UK at the time, were so kind. And they reached out to me and said, hey, Paul, you know, you're one of the good guys and um, we're going to do our best to see if we can get you a job. So I it was very, very kind. I didn't want a job. Um, I was fed up with that. I thought, I'm going to create my own Salesforce systems integration business, and that's what I did. And what Salesforce really kindly did was they let me speak as if I was a customer. Don't tell anyone, but um, because it probably shouldn't have been done, but they let me speak as if I was a customer at events. And those events back then were very early days, service cloud events, and I was speaking at them. Somebody, well, I in fact won several short engagements um, and in setting up my own business to do that. At um, 11 years old, the age of 45, I think, I was um, wondering, God, I need to print some business cards, I need to set up a website, never done that before. I even need to invoice people. And I mean, you get to mid 40s and you've got no clue. I had no clue how to do that. So fairly straightforward things in the end, but things at the time that um, seemed quite different to me from corporate life and big company life. So I did that. Um, I ended up speaking at an event for Salesforce, a service cloud event in Birmingham. And at that event was a gentleman by the name of Jonathan Grant from New Voice Media, the CEO. And he came up to me afterwards and said, do I gather that you're a consultant, an independent consultant? I said, yes. And he said, would you come and um, take a look at our Salesforce solution, which I did. Uh, there was some work to do with that. Uh, and that's fairly irrelevant to this story, but in meeting New Voice Media, and I met lots of customers, by the way, or, or organizations, um, and they were small customers of mine because I was doing little bits of work um, as an independent consultant. Um, I didn't really have a view that I would end up interviewing the company I was destined to then work for, but that's what it turned out to be. So instead of applying for a lot of jobs, I got to do two-day engagements, one-week engagements with lots of different businesses, so I did that. I really liked New Voice Media. It was a small company at the time, 2009, 30 people, I think 30 or 40 customers, pretty much all in the UK, a cloud-based contact center. Very few people in the organization had, had really even heard of Salesforce. Um, so I um, talked to Jonathan afterwards and Another kind, kind act, um, I mean, I suppose that was a two-way thing. I think I had something to offer and, and the company and he had something to offer. So we did a deal and I joined as the Chief Operating Officer. Um, I never expected that to happen. And if it wasn't for Salesforce being kind to me when I lost my job, um, as a supplier to my previous company, they, but they were kind, they didn't need to be. Um, I wouldn't have picked up those engagements and I wouldn't have gone to New Voice Media, I wouldn't have met them and Jonathan and I wouldn't have got the job as a COO, which I then did for five years. 
Five years ago, I realized I don't know enough about data centers and infrastructure at scale to continue in the role. And what I love to do is work with customers and work with businesses and people and prospects uh, to evangelize. And I've always been in a customer facing role. Um, so took the job that I am now in, um, well, four years ago to work in sales, looking after or meeting prospects, looking after some customers, um, traveling, I love, unfortunately not doing that right now, um, and continuing to work with Salesforce. So I guess there's a, there's a real message here, which is perhaps don't think that you need to apply for jobs. Think of something different to do. Maybe you have an opportunity right now to look to your heart and decide, I've always wanted to try that. Well, just give it a try. I had no idea that in setting up a tiny one person business um, and going off and doing some consulting projects, I'd end up um, 10 years later where I am now having a great time. I love what I do. Um, I love the, um, the people that I work with, my friends still, um, of course at Vonage, but at Salesforce. Um, I was hoping to go to Dreamforce for the 11th or 12th time in a row this year. I won't be going because it's cancelled. But in 2019, when I went, um, I had the great fortune to go see Barack Obama be interviewed on stage by Mark Benioff. And something really stood out to me then. Um, and it was something he said about the things, the thing he really taught his daughters. And so I hope he doesn't mind that I've borrowed the phrase, but I am crediting him with it. Um, I hope you can see that be kind and be useful. And I just thought that was a terrific way to live. And I'm lucky some people I've met have certainly been kind and useful. Um, I hope I can be too now. And you know, if any of you would like some advice or to talk over a situation, then um, contact me with a message and I'll see what I can do. Thanks for watching.